Hello everyone, welcome to the Lincoln Scientific Workshop on cryofluorescence, cryoimaging and correlative techniques. My name is Michael Schwertner. We are here in the UK near London at Lincoln Scientific and in the next roughly half an hour we will cover um, application background and also practical issues relating to cryosample handling. Make yourself comfortable, get a cup of coffee perhaps, and enjoy the workshop. Let's get started uh, with an overview. We will first look at the development history of the stage, also some history of the company, Lincoln Scientific. Then we will look into uh, the background for the application, the different workflows, single particle tomography, EM tomography, EM techniques, and in the second and main part we will then cover the sample handling of cryo samples some precautions for handling and transfer easy steps to learn and uh, we will also look into automated grid mapping and software integration into your microscope system and the last bit is of course the discussion and your feedback you can submit your questions at any time to link them if you have questions using the system. Lincoln Scientific is a company, it's a family company that has been around, around for more than 30 years. We are predominantly known for our stages um, that are used in the material science sector for material sample characterization but for more than 10 years we've also been working on the development of cryo stages and uh, cryo systems related to preparing and uh, imaging cryo samples. Quick overview on the history of the development of the cryo stage. In the beginning we started with a modification of uh, our standard stage which uh, can also cool down to liquid nitrogen temperatures however what we found was that for cryoimaging you need to take special care to prevent condensation and ice contamination on the sample which is a major task for cryoimaging and therefore we had to start with a completely new design um, to achieve this the development was done in collaboration with the group of Professor Bram Koster and Roman Koning at LUMC, Leiden University Medical Center. And um, several iterations and generations uh, were designed. And the latest one is the motorized one, which has um, optical encoders and so on in that version we will uh, refer to in this webinar. Now let's have a look at cryofluorescence and the different workflow options. First of all what is the motivation to do correlative work and cryo? The idea is to combine unique specific advantages of uh, both techniques First of all, the fluorescence microscopy has all the benefits of versatile labeling techniques. You can very specifically label biological, chemical or even genetic processes inside your cell or in, in your, for example, bacteria, cells, virus particles and so on. So fluorescence is a very powerful technique. However, because it's an optical technique, it is limited in, in resolution typically and here it comes in handy to combine that with EM or X-ray techniques. They don't give you the same specific labeling opportunities but uh, they give you very high resolution structural context and if you merge the two data sets you can get better insight into your uh, sample and the behavior. Therefore it's a very powerful technique to combine these. How does cryo fit in into this? First of all the cryo samples are uh, preserved 
in a near native state is a superior uh, structural preservation that is because the fast freezing process leads to vitrified samples and therefore uh, they are in a near natural state fully hydrated um, which is different to other techniques where you might need to remove or substitute the water uh, which can be done but might lead to artifacts in addition you also find that most fluorescent dyes will show reduced photo bleaching and superior signal to noise ratio for imaging at cryo level here we look at different options for the workflow normally you would start with in vivo fluorescence imaging your live sample maybe you are looking to find an, an interesting region so that is normally the first step it could be um, cells particles vesicles and so on and uh, dependent on the sample thickness you would normally choose either high pressure freezing or planche freezing to produce a vitrified sample vitrification means the freezing happens so fast that there's no time for crystals to form and therefore you have no disruption from crystal formation uh, in the freezing process then you would go to cryofluorescence normally or other um, optical techniques to inspect your cryo sample then dependent on the choice of high resolution technique you might also choose to do um, FIP focused ion beam processing to generate lamellas in case you want to do tomography or you could go to direct TEM high resolution transmission electron microscopy to complement your optical data sets here is an interesting uh, related uh, part which shows that cryofluorescence and cryoimaging is a relevant technique in its own right uh, and that is because for many dyes uh, and fluorescent labeling techniques you will find that not only is the fluorescence signal stronger in cryo mode but also you have a reduced photo bleaching rate and as a result you get more photons out of every dye molecule uh, in your sample and that is a key to either achieving better signal to noise and or also better resolution if you go for one of the super resolution technique this is um, illustrated here in some of the common super resolution techniques uh, for example palm storm you're localizing your molecule and your super uh, resolution factor so the benefit um, compared to the conventional imaging technique and the localization precision they both depend on the number n of photons that you can uh, capture and detect so the localization precision goes with the square root of n so that means if you have for example 100 times more photons from your sample because uh, be before it experiences bleaching then you will be able to achieve a 10 times better localization precision which is a dramatic improvement over the room temperature uh, version of the same process here's a summary of um, applications or reasons why you might choose um, cryo and cryocorrelative techniques first of all the most common is of course the uh, data fusion between high resolution TM or X-ray methods uh, with fluorescence which has advantages in labeling and versatility of the labeling process you can use it also for high resolution tomography FIPSEM and uh, FIP related techniques you can pre-screen your cryo samples if you want to go straight to cryo EM it's often useful to pre-screen your samples to check your 
uh, cryo sample preparation protocols and therefore if you do that on an optical microscope you will save EM time or beam time in your electron microscope which is normally quite expensive. Then as discussed before there are also cryo super resolution techniques that have the potential to go beyond what can be achieved at room temperature and that is despite the fact that in cryo you normally don't have immersion capable lenses so the NA is usually slightly lower however the benefit from uh, the signal to noise in cryo is so large that it's a net gain a significant net gain to do cryo super resolution last but not least of course you can do cryo spectroscopy where uh, many fluorophores behave differently at uh, low temperatures now we will look in more detail into the use of the CMS196 cryo stage version 3 and uh, it is used in many labs around the world so most of you or many of you might have seen it it is a self-contained cryo uh, sample system it uses liquid nitrogen so it keeps the sample vitrified at minus 196 degrees and the key thing here is what you need to do in your cryoimaging setup is um, two things first of all the sample needs to be kept above uh, below minus 140 degrees because otherwise it would uh, devitrify so you need to keep your sample in this low temperature condition at all times but also you need to protect your sample from contamination which um, if you were to handle your sample in a normal environment with humidity you would get ice contamination quite quickly and the way the stage protects your sample is that uh, inside the sample chamber here we will talk about that in more detail um, your sample is kept above a liquid nitrogen bath and because you have liquid in the sample chamber any contamination the, the bath is always the coldest spot and any contamination or moisture or other things you might have in the atmosphere around the sample they will condense into the liquid bath and um, in addition because you have liquid nitrogen you always have a, a constant evaporation rate and the evaporation generates clean and dry nitrogen gas which flows out of the chamber and therefore it prevents environmental air and moisture into your sample chamber so there's two mechanisms here that help to protect your sample your cryo sample and allow to image over long time your samples with no contamination or very low contamination level it also allows you to do fully automated XY mapping and then um, export this uh, coordinate system information into other systems you're using for the correlation uh, it has optical encoders inside the system and so these coordinates are independently defined by uh, glass rulers and calibrated reference uh, standards now let's um, have a look at tools you would normally use here some of them are, are lined up straight uh, tweezers are normally for for grid handling um, you probably have your favorite ones this is the magnet tool which um, is used to pick up the sample cassette we will look in, into that later in this case this is a standard sample cassette it can hold up to three standard EM grids um, so the magnet tool is used quite frequently the angle tweezers is also uh, very useful because the uh, sample transfer container which we have which is shown here um, has a gripping holes so that you can easily pick up and grip and handle this um, container as we will see in a moment 
then um, you might have those uh, grid storage containers this one in particular is a, is a modified one where the screw on top is um, has a little recess where you can easily grip it, uh, grip it with um, these angled uh, standard tweezers then there is other tools for calibrating the field of view this uh, the black plastic part you see here is to store the uh, the graticule uh, for the field of view calibration and use it inside the stage when you power the stage on normally goes through the uh, homing process the green LED is for transmitted light you can uh, control it uh, with the buttons or from the software and in the standard screen it will show you the the XY coordinates um, of the XY system and also the sensor readings so here you have bridge chamber and dual bridge is where your sample is mounted that's the sample um, temperature the chamber is the temperature inside your sample compartment over here and the dual is the compartment where you refill your uh, liquid nitrogen there is also a base temperature um, that is to heat the whole stage uh, to minimize um, temperature expansion and contraction to keep it stable and drift free so uh, that's also actively controlled there's also um, a joystick of course uh, you can you can operate the stage either completely manually from the from the joystick or you can do all this in the software it's dependent on your your workflow and your preference so the joystick also allows you to set uh, the speed of the xy with the buttons now we will look at the use of the transfer container that's the container that we have seen before with the handling uh, so you're using usually the uh, angle tweezer again I'm demonstrating this now uh, in in the dry mode but we will later look at uh, cryo runs as well so you place the container into the section where there's the footprint um, and you use the tweezers to pull open that little slider to um, reveal access to the sample cassette and cartridge um, you can then with a magnet tool retrieve your cassette which will then store uh, and carry the EM grid samples and one thing is also to note that when you retract this slider it also engages with the stage so therefore when you lift out the cassette it will not lift uh, the whole transfer box um, now we will have a quick look at the menu which you can operate uh, using the buttons so on the right hand side you can flick through the different menu screens so with a plus minus uh, on move grid you can access your grid positions one two three there's other options uh, when you click further so the condenser intensity is the uh, built-in uh, green LED that um, is used in transmission mode usually you can control it again here with the buttons or in the software the whole stage can be um, connected via USB you can force a bake out mode after using the stage it's recommended that you bake out the stage before storing it and um, there's more the alarm volume is to remind you that uh, you need liquid nitrogen the liquid nitrogen lasts usually half an hour uh, if you use the internal duo but you can image for more than half a day also with a separate larger three liter dual 
the base set point is uh, shown here. This one should normally be set uh, one or two degrees above room temperature um, to match the temperature of your microscope and the environment. Okay, now let's look at the EM grid and you can see that there is one loaded here uh, in the middle position and to retrieve it you need to open the sandwich uh, the the holder one thing that's important is I should stop the video here that the golden uh, part of the cassette I'll go back to show this better so that's the part visible on the top here should face the side where you have the hex element which is then later used to open and close. Opening and closing works with the hex end of the magnet tool and you can watch this uh, little dot here. When you open it, it turns red and then it will open the sandwich and gives you access to uh, this area where you can retrieve the grid and there's a little round cutout which gives you better access to the grid positions. Now we will have a look at the stage cooldown. Here stage is plugged in and uh, prepared. Please observe all the safety precautions you might have in your lab, the special uh, rules. You might want to wear glasses and or gloves. Here we fill up um, the stage and you can immediately see that the sensor readings, the uh, sensor temperatures go down first in the duo. At this point in time the stage is not yet actually filling and transferring liquid from the dewer into the chamber so you push this button and then you trigger the filling and then the stage will um, lift this solenoid pin and the liquid will come in here in this top left corner of the uh, chamber and fill the chamber uh, slowly and then you will see the temperatures of the chamber and also of the bridge uh, cooling down. The cool down takes um, probably two minutes or so until the bridge reaches temperature below um, minus 140 from, from which you could uh, use it to work. But for the best stability of the stage, you should have it at liquid nitrogen temperatures temperature for half an hour at least. Normally you use the um, lid to cover the stage if you're not yet um, mounting a sample and also there's this um, snorkel element, snorkel uh, part here to cover the, the filling aperture. Here we will look at the loading um, of a grid sample onto the sample bridge of the stage and we will demonstrate that for a standard EM grid. So the uh, sample box is in the liquid nitrogen and we rotate the lid to um, give access to the footprint um, where we want to place this cartridge. So we pre-cool the tool a little bit and we grip our storage container and quickly transfer it through the air into the stage. Note that of course the lid of the uh, transfer box is, uh, of the storage box, the blue one is closed and it's now inserted. In the next step we will then swing around the uh, plastic lid and uh, load it into the uh, cassette of the system. First we open the slider lid of the pre-cooled transfer box which now has an empty cassette in there in the system. It interlocks and 
we are now taking the hex uh, we are we are pre-cooling the hex end of the magnet tool to operate our transfer container in a moment now it's pre-cooling and we use that on the hex element here and it will turn red as you can see and the cassette is open now so here we can access the gap for loading now we uh, turn the plastic lid of the storage box now we can access the EM grid we're using a, a straight tweezer in this case we're pre-cooling the tool we will be able to grip the grid that's all already visible here in the storage box and transfer it into the other cassette. Remember when you uh, pre-cool your tools not to uh, go too high with your tools and stay in a relatively low uh, position in a safe atmosphere inside the chamber. Now this is dropped into the uh, slot here. We use only the middle one and in the next step we will of course close it. In this case the tool wasn't pre-cooled as it ideally should be but uh, it's, it's fine for this demonstration. Also I'd like to mention that this cassette is for standard grids but um, you can also use the holder for the FEI Thermo Fisher Auto Grids and in this case you would then load your pre-clipped grids uh, directly into a into storage box into the stage and uh, just transfer them into a similar holder that's compatible so you would handle only pre-clipped grids rather than standard bare EM grids. Here we are now continuing to load the complete cassette onto the sample bridge for viewing. I'll show that. So we are pre-cooling the tool again, the magnet end in this case. Um, everything is still in position as you've seen it in the last step. So there's a grid in the middle loaded with a magnet tool. You go close, it connects and the whole cassette pops up. Then you stay relatively close, you swing the lid over and the magnets on the bridge pull this um, cassette automatically in position. There are reference pins here and then should go back to that. Uh, one detail you should observe is when you want to separate the magnet tool from the sample cassette, you should, or it's, it's very easy to do it if you if you then go sideways and you strip off the magnet tool from the cassette. There are many ways of doing it but this is one that works very well. Okay before we continue with microscope mounting uh, let's have a look at the alarms that the stage will give. In this case here you see the the optical alarm when the whole the chamber light is is flashing reminding you that you should refill liquid nitrogen. There's also a beeping alarm which you can configure in the menu system and as discussed before the stage lasts roughly half an hour if you fill the the internal dewer that's here on the left or it can last half a day with a three liter external dewer which isn't shown here in the in the videos but it's uh, it's available. Next step is the actual attachment to the microscope and in this case it's a Nikon LV100. The clamps used here are the standard um, curved clamps. Uh, it will depend on your microscope which type of clamp or adapter you will require. Here only the right hand screw of the clamping set is used while the left two ones are always uh, in place to define the XY position of the mounting. Normally you would start with the low magnification 5x lens 
and here we also show how to use the focus lock so you check your sample focus and if you find uh, your focus then you would normally use a locking mechanism to make sure that you don't uh, run over your focal uh, position that also makes it very easy to find the focal position again at higher magnification and it also protects the sample from being touched and devitrified and also it protects the bridge of the cryostage from being crashed into with a microscope lens. So if you set this lock it's very easy to find your uh, focal position and in this case is a mechanical uh, locking mechanism but there are also systems out there where you do this in, in software in a motorized system by setting a Z limit for the stage. Now let's go to the next step here we show different um, focusing so here it's in transmitted mode with a low magnification five times you see almost the whole grid and this is now reflected light not yet uh, with the fluorescence filter in place this is a blue LED and you can also mix different contrast modes same grid here so hexagonal pattern standard copper grid and now we are switching to fluorescence and you can already see the first features here appearing. This is just a beads uh, sample prepared. This is in five times in cryo mode and you can only make out clusters but not yet uh, the individual beads. For that we need to switch to a higher magnification. We now go to the hundred times switch over as mentioned before, we are, we are using the, the focus stop feature to quickly arrive at our Z position that we have uh, predefined with a lower magnification five times. And here you can now recognize the, the beads that are attached to the grid bars. You can use the joystick at, as it was done here to move around um, on your sample and navigate. The next point which is uh, software and different options to control the stage. There is support in several different software systems. On the left here you see a screenshot of Link. That's the software available from Linkem to do the grid mapping and uh, control other features of the stage. So here you would have all the controls for the XY system. You can in this configuration do a semi-automatic scan of the grid, which means the stage XY system always moves to the next position. You will always have a chance to refocus and review the focus and then you just uh, press the space bar and it moves to the next XY position. And you can always interact with the system and adjust the focus if there's a need to do that. That also relates to the flatness of, of the grids. The Zeiss uh, Zen software is shown on the right here. This is the tiling uh, setup and you can do XY scan or you can also do an XYZ scan if your microscope supports this, this feature and if you have a motorized Z. The stage coordinates are shown here on the right and there's also a list of position marks you can predefine and, and store and you can also then export your whole data set into Zen Connect which is a different module and that also interfaces with other kit from Zeiss and even other ma uh, manufacturers I believe with um, open formats so you can export images and underlying uh, coordinate information and you can also do the temperature logging of the stage and and more. Then there are additional software options. Uh, the Nikon NIS Elements software is also supported uh, 
so you can do x y positioning z stacks and so on then there is the aurox visionary aurox uh, makes laser free confocal systems and that system can also control the stage there are two more options you can choose to uh, write your own software and for that we provide an SDK in the form of a, a Windows DLL and also Linux versions if that's what you prefer then there's also last but not least the option to integrate the stage into micromanager micromanager or image J Fiji platform if you are familiar with this uh, system now we covered the software in terms of the hardware the stage is uh, designed to fit most of the upright microscopes from the major uh, four manufacturers um, Zeiss, Nikon, Olympus and Leica remember that it has to be an, an upright system where you can fit the stage there are for the upright systems you can have a, a stage focus or a nose piece focus system and for for transmitted light you can use the built-in LED or you can also use the external illumination from the microscope there is also under development um, a cryoinverter system which I will um, discuss later in a moment here we have an overview of the sample mounting options so this standard cassette allows you to mount up to three standard EM grids that are inserted into the cassette we have seen that in the demonstration then there is the support direct support also for planchettes or the membrane carriers for the Leica high pressure freezer the impact or the the newer versions equally um, are supported from the high pressure freezing system you can mount pre-clipped grids in the FEI or Thermo Fisher auto grid configuration and that has a special holder which works very similar to the to the standard EM holder then there are Bessie grids if, if you like to use those or some people also use the Polara tomography holder and there, there are adapters there are also additional adapters not shown here for the jail systems so there is a, a wide range of ways to mount your samples one topic we are uh, not discussing in this workshop is the uh, Zeiss cryo workflow so there are different tools and accessories software support and so on available for a special workflow uh, developed and released by Zeiss that's also based on the CMS 196 for this one please contact Zeiss or look look for the information available from Zeiss there's also quite a nice YouTube video you can watch to show this different set of holders and tools available there this is um, a development still um, in prototype stage but it allows to use the cryo stage to be mounted on an inverted system and that has benefits because you can use the inverted platforms that are most widely available in bio labs which would normally carry out such um, research and it also gives uh, very convenient access to the sample because you can tilt the whole optical system away and access your stage for sample loading so in this case the stage always remains on the inverted system it always remains mounted and you tilt the optics out of the way to do your sample loading and access we have already arrived at the last slide and over the years we have collaborated on the development and stepwise improvement of the stage but in particular we like to thank 
LUMC, which was involved in in the development of the cryo stage from the very beginning, and the group of Bram Costa and Roman Koning. Also, we like to thank Orox and NPL, the National Physics Laboratory, for the collaboration on the cryo inverter setup. If you have any questions or comments or maybe ideas, we'd like to hear from you. Contact details are below, uh, linkem.co.uk and uh, info at linkem, or you can also reach me at uh, michaelschwerten at linkem .co.uk. We look forward to hear from you. You can also check our website for updates on the cryo stage and accessories for it. Thank you very much for listening and we look forward to hear from you.